Hey everyone, how are you doing? It is Giza, and I thought I'd do a little stream um, showing some, some small bits of progress on Super Sprint uh, that I'm porting to the Amiga uh, from, the, from the arcade, Amiga AGA. And this is probably going to be quite a technical stream, but you know, if, you, if you're like in developing Amiga games, you might find it interesting. Uh, so I want to show you where I've getting up to um, initially. So just build the, just build it and run the run the machine. So what we've got implemented now is uh, we can bounce off some of the uh, ballards and. Like that. So the collisions are working, which is absolutely fine. And we've also got the sprite priorities working. You'll notice that I can go up and under the bridge, and yeah, this, which isn't quite working properly yet, um, some bugs with it. But overall, it's I'm quite happy with quite happy with the progress and if I stick the, the debug text on you'll be able to see some other things that I've implemented as well so you'll notice down here we've got um, call up and checkpoint and you'll see that if I move the car just along the track that the number of the checkpoints are going up and that is that is so that I can check whether the car has actually went round a lap or whether they're cheating or not uh, so you'll see the checkpoint areas being being actually it's a little increase and then hopefully what we should see is the lap increase I think we did see the lap increase there and it'll reset the checkpoint to zero so I'll just go around one more time and hopefully we'll see the lap go to two i think yeah. yeah there you go so we've got we've got the bare bones of the engine um working quite well now um but yeah so some of the collision stuff isn't actually quite right uh, as you can see there so i purposely did that but what i wanted to show you was actually how i've how i've kind of went about it and it's been quite a little interesting development project this um, so I want to show you I'm just going to show you how it's hung together now uh, this is a paint shop at paint.net so this is this is a this is obviously a circle with um, the uh, 360 degrees converted to uh, radians now Around this this outer edge here ranges from zero to thirty. Uh, the zero to thirty are actually the frames of the car, and in the outer side, the outer edge is the is the sign value that I use to determine the direction of the car. So, if the car, for example, is um, you know going in this direction here and um, we we know which frame to show it in because um, it's shown, going to show frame 19 of the car now what i've got to do to determine the collisions which is the whole point of this is work out when the car hits when the nose of the car hits something i've got to kind of kind of work out what the car does uh, does it just bounce back or does it reverse does it does it kind of ricochet off the, the the side all of that type of stuff so i'm just going to show you the the, the car um each of the cars as well there's the, the 30 frames of each car uh, simply copied those are the bit masks of the car which i've trimmed down um probably not done a very good job of that and i've been doing some other things as well just to get the graphics prepared um the title screen that's prepared to race and this one here was interesting um, 
bit of a brain teaser this one just you know but I'll, I'll i'll come back to this why why it's a bit of a brain teaser um but yeah so what i'll do is um just go into tile tile d and there's quite a few layers um involved in this particular track now i've chosen the most difficult track to probably do in the game because kind of my thought is, is that I do I do the most difficult thing in the game and get all got all the engine working, and then the other parts of the game will be quite easy to do. Um, it's just which way I work. So first thing we'll do is is just sh I'll just show uh, what the tracks actually looks like. So there's the uh, if we select there. So there's the lower part of the track, and on this particular track there's actually a, a bridge that goes across there. So I can open that bridge as well and then you can see the bridge which I've overlaid on top but what I've got to do as well is actually put the collision map on so if the car is on the lower part of the track um, if it ventures outside of this purple area then it has to check to see which direction the car was going and you know what it needs to do with the car so i've got that for both for both um lower and upper track so there's the the upper track collision so the car if we just take those off again what we'll see yeah what we'll see so the car will start here and they'll drive along and then when it gets to this point here what I want to do is I want the car to kind of start elevating and moving and moving up into the upper track and then going across this bridge and then go around and then under the bridge so it's working out how to do that um, with programming and what I've come up with is um, is these bike kind of bike codes so what we've got let me show you this so this is the this is the obviously the kind of the track uh, divided made up of like eight by eight pixel blocks. So I'll just put the uh, yeah so I'll just overlay that there. So this is the lower part of the track that we've that we've got here. Now if you take a look at these in the orange, those are in the orange are the collision kind of the collision bites so if the car ventures outside of this purple area the nose of the car will check underlying what's one of what one of these bites is and if it gets a seven as it is here then what will happen is the car will do something and what it'll do is based on uh, this this circle here so if the car is traveling uh, direct north and it hits a seven what it will essentially do is it will rebound back and reverse back to this point here to zero zero on the sine table or the sine cosine table so it'll just shunt back and if it's on frame 21 it might shunt back to f0 here um, but if it's on say if it hits the seven and it's on frame 18 what it looks like the arcade does is that it ricochets off the car and it'll send it in a in a direction um opposite to it so the reason you've got to have different values based on north south east west is that how does it know whether the car needs to go east west or north south when it ricochets off so that's that's the reason for that so basically it hits a bike cord and the car will venture off and do something based on based on what that bike code is and you'll see that i've done this all the way around the track now i've only actually implemented uh, the sevens and the fives and the nines i think so in the upper track i have the nines as well so the nines are implemented here and that's that's essentially how i'm doing the collision and i'll probably show you the Show you what the table looks like, I guess, for interest. Um, 
So you know, if it hits a chord which is five, what it'll do is it goes into five, and these are all the frames here. So 30 frames, and it sends the car off on a rebound, or it sends it sends the car off just a straight reverse. Uh, and I've got to essentially implement all of these for all the different bike chords that that I have, which won't, won't take me won't take me too long to be fair. Uh, I've done the easy ones, which is just kind of the the the, the north, south, east, east, west ones for now. But what I've also done is how do I work out how the car goes up into the upper track and the lower track? Well, I'm doing that by in these blue, these blue ones here are set 21, which determines whether the car toggles between the upper and lower sections of the track. And I've also got here as well on the track 23, which tells the car that it's actually going up a ramp. And uh, 24, I can't remember what that was, but 20, let me just make sure I've, let me just take a look at this. We've got 23 going up the ramp. Uh, 24 was probably coming off the ramp. 25 and 26 was going on the bridge. So if we take a look at the, so that's the bridge there. So 25 off the bridge, 26 on the bridge, going across and around and then the toggle there tell, telling the, the cars to go back to the car to go back to the lower part of the lower section of the track. What I've also got here as well, if I just bring up the, um, I'll just take that off and that one, and just bring up the actual tracks themselves. So you will see that these uh, there's a there's a bridge here where the car can kind of roll off, go off the end of the bridge, and it get blows up in like a horrific fashion. So we are handling that. I'm not sure whether this will work yet. Um, it's going to be like a bit of an experiment. But uh, if I just bring up the yeah, so there's the bridge there, and if the nose of the car hits. Uh, zero here then we're pretty sure that it's actually uh, pretty sure that it's actually went off the bridge so then programmatically I'll be able to determine that the car needs to needs to crash onto the lower section of the track so I'm hoping that's going to actually work um, not totally sure yet and so yeah and the last thing I wanted to last thing I wanted to touch on with this was the um, was the checkpoints so if I just bring up the, the checkpoints, you will see that this is the starting line here, and the greens, which are the checkpoints, those are, so if the car is here, and it drives along, now, it drives along and then it gets to checkpoint 41, 42, and then in the upper section of the track, it will get to where is it 43 44 and 45 and so forth all the way around the track and then when it gets to there it does a lap now without that there will be absolutely nothing stopping somebody simply just kind of going round starting here going round and then going back over and finishing the finishing the the, the circuit that way so that's why i've had to do that uh, the the purple ones I'm reserving for uh, for the drone cars to determine which direction the drone cars need to go in. Uh, I haven't given it too much thought about that, but I think it's probably going to work out okay. Uh, I'll get the I'll get the rest of the I'll get all of the kind of the collision detection stuff working properly first, which shouldn't take me a lot of time, um, and then I'll get. Uh, I'll I'll start implementing that, but that's that's I'm quite pleased with the progress that, that I've made in very very short space of time. So yeah, uh, just one thing to come back to was the was the uh, the this here really kind of thought this would be like quite the the simplest thing to do. Uh, so basically, if uh, if the blue car finishes first, 
uh, it'll be crowned the top and the colours change for the car and I thought that you know this should be quite easy to do. Uh, not so. So what I've essentially done is is that I've just taken a mask of um, what I'm going to do I should say is just take a, the, a copy of this uh, with the player cars masked out and that will be in 32 colors that will be in 32 colors that's right so I'm going to set up a, 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 um, a 64 color interlaced screen high res interlaced screen I'm going to put that in the background and then over the top of it I'm going to put the um, this here and I'm simply going to change the palette for each of the cars depending on who's won and who's lost and that should solve that particular problem uh, I'll, could be a bit of a could be a bit of an interesting one but apart from that I've got uh, all the all the assets out of the game I've had a little little bit of help uh, which is great and you know there's this there's the start screen there got the prepare to race there's some animation stuff that needs to be done here but you know I, I don't think that's going to give me a lot of trouble um and one big thing I'm really going to put in the game is the is the controls uh, you know I really want this to work over over net play and I, th I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a great addition to the Amiga um, I know we got the Atari ST uh, version of it. Um, I can't remember the guy who, who converted it, but you know that was really good. But this is one of them games that I really love, and it'd be great to see an arcade port of it. So that's it. I was just wanting to show you where what I was up to, um, what I've you know, what I've um, been doing uh, for a couple of hours today. Um, probably going to take a bit of time, but. Yeah, that's that's all this whole situation of lockdown. So that's me over and out. Hope you liked the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.